Chapter 9. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may shew him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant, whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And the, he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may shew the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell in his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindly for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldst look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all, uh, and to all his house. Now thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread alway at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, He shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son, whose name was Micah, and all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table, and was lame on both his feet. Here we see a sign of true greatness in David and in any person who follows the same pattern. David remembers Jonathan and he loved him. He also remembered Saul and honored Saul. And so he asks the, the servant if there are any descendants of Saul or Jonathan still alive. And the servant knows of the, a son of Jonathan who is lame on both his feet. And obviously this person doesn't think particularly highly of themselves. He goes into the king and, and when he falls flat on his face and worships, uh, not worships, but uh, just does obeisance before David. And he refers to himself as a dead dog. Now in, in Israel, he would have been seen that way. Somebody who was lame in both his feet and couldn't walk basically couldn't do much. I have difficulty walking sometimes, and there's a lot of things that I can't do, and I, I just, I'm lame on one foot. If I had both of them, it would be even worse. So, he decides, David decides, that he is going to not only look after this man, but he is going to restore unto him everything that was Saul's, and Saul had considerable estates and wealth as the king he always would have had. And he assigned Ziba, his servant, who had 15 sons and 20 servants, to look after the land for him. But nevertheless, he wasn't going to need the land to have food to eat because he was going to eat with David all the time. And you couldn't do any better in all of Israel than to eat at the king's table. You were looked after, you had the best food, you basically not only ate at this table, but you lived in the castle, and you were looked after, and whatever you needed was provided for you. And so this, man, this young man had gone from being in the worst of all possible conditions to having the best that Israel could provide, and all of that was because of David honoring the promise he made in 1 Samuel chapter 20 to Jonathan. Now you find that all great men, all great women, keep the promises that they make. All of them 
think on other people whom they might bless. When they reach a certain level, whatever it happens to be, in of well-being, of grace, of understanding, or whatever, they are always looking for those less fortunate than them that they can share it with. And the lesson we have here is David is doing exactly this. And one of the reasons for having this in there is not only the history of David, but to understand that this is something that the Heavenly Father would like us to do. Regardless of how little we might think we have, uh, those of us who live in the Western world, in North America particularly, are fabulously rich compared to virtually everybody else on the face of the earth. And we can share a great deal and need to. And we're going to be judged on how well we share and how well we give and how well we do in caring for those people who are less well off than us.